Welcome to part 2 of the lesson on internal resistance. Parts 2 and 3 are about calculations for circuits containing internal resistance, so this is the first of the calculation parts. Let's go back to our basic cell with internal resistance. EMFE, internal resistance, usually a small r, and a dotted line represents the fact that this is a single unit, a single cell. Let's introduce some terminology. Suppose you connect a voltmeter between the terminals of the cell. That's the points in, on the end of the cell where the wires go in and out. The voltmeter is measuring the potential difference of voltage between the terminals of the cell and it's got a special name. That voltage is referred to as the terminal PD or the terminal voltage. Note we can measure the terminal voltage but we can't measure the voltage across the internal resistance. The internal resistance isn't a separate physical object inside the cell. It's distributed through the whole body of the cell. It depends on materials and construction of the cell. We can still think of it as a separate resistance for calculation purposes though and we can think of it having its own voltage across it. I've called that V subscript R, the voltage across the internal resistance, but it can't be measured directly. Let's put some values in. Suppose the internal resistance is 0.1 ohms and the EMF is 1.5 volts. Let's suppose that this is connected to some other components not shown and a current of 2 amps is flowing through the through the cell. Can we work out how big this voltage is, the voltage across the internal resistance, and how big the terminal PD is. Yes, we can. Let's do it. The voltage across the internal resistance is easy. V equals IR. So the voltage across it is the current through it times its resistance, small r. 2 amps times 0.1 ohms is 0.2 volts. And that's the voltage across this internal resistance. How about the terminal PD, the voltage between the outside terminals of the cell? Well, let me tell you how to do it first. It's very simple. We take the EMF, which is 1.5, and we just subtract the voltage across the internal resistance. It's 1.5 minus 0.2. And the terminal PD is simply 1.3 volts. It's less than the EMF, 1.3 volts. And the question is, why did I do that? Why did I take away 0.2 from 1.5? If you go back to the original explanations, definitions of what EMF and voltage are, you may remember that the EMF is the amount of energy turned from chemical to electrical per joule passing through the cell. 1.5 volts means 1.2, sorry, 1.5 joules per coulomb. And that's the amount of electrical energy produced per coulomb. On the other hand, this resistance has a voltage, a potential difference of 0.2 volts across it. That means that 0.2 joules of electrical energy are turned to heat per coulomb that passes through it. So we've got the top part of the cell producing 1.5 joules per coulomb of electrical energy and the internal resistance using up 0.2 joules per coulomb turning electrical energy to heat. The overall effect is the cell only delivers 1.3 joules per coulomb because the 0.2 joules per coulomb has been wasted heating up the internal resistor which means the cell gets warm. And that means when we work out the terminal PD, we've got to subtract the effect of the internal resistance from the EMF. EMF minus internal resistors voltage. 1.5 minus 0.2, 1.3. We appear to have lost some voltage, don't we? The, the EMF was 1.5, but the voltmeter says the cell is only supplying 1.3. We've lost 0.2 of a volt, and that's why the voltage across the internal resistance, which is its 
current times little r y we call that the lost volts it's a common name it sounds a bit peculiar but the lost volts is the voltage across the internal resistance <coughs> it's a voltage we have to subtract from the emf to get the terminal pd here's a couple of questions for you to try <coughs> excuse me what do you think the terminal pd will be first of all if the current's 10 amps and then if the current is zero if you want to pause the video you may want to just to try those for yourself okay first of all that should say a when the current is 10 amps the lost volts i times little r it's 10 times 0 0.1 which is 1 volt we've got to take away that 1 volt from the emf 1.5 minus 1 is 0 0.5 volts. The terminal PD has dropped. It's only 0 0.5 volts because the current is so big. And as the current gets bigger, the terminal PD gets less because of the effect of lost volts. How about when the current is zero? That's a nice easy one. The lost volts will be zero because I times R is zero times R. Naught and the lost volts are zero so the terminal PD will be the EMF minus zero and it's the same as the EMF and the general rule is when I is zero when the current through the cell is zero the terminal PD will equal the EMF what do you think will happen if the internal resistance is zero what's the terminal PD if the internal resistance is zero well, you can probably guess but we can prove it the lost volts will be zero because I times R will be I times zero and the terminal PD will be the EMF 1.5 minus zero it's still 1.5 and another general rule when the internal resistance is zero the terminal PD equals the EMF in real life cells don't have zero internal resistance but they might have a very low internal resistance another question we can ask is what is the terminal PD in current if the cell is short circuited by short circuited I mean we join the terminals of the cell with the zero resistance wire so a big current can flow around the circuit the zero resistance connecting the terminals if you want to pause you might want to try that for yourself what's the terminal PD and the current if the cell is short circuited and the first thing to do is work out the lost volts well if we look at the circuit there's only two things in the circuit there's the cell with an EMF of 1.5 volts and there's the internal resistance we know from Kirchhoff's second law the EMF in the loop is equal to the sum of the voltages well there's only one voltage in that loop and that's the voltage across the internal resistance so the EMF and the voltage across the, the internal resistance are equal V subscript R the lost volts will be 1.5 volts that means the terminal PD will be the EMF minus the lost volts it's, it's zero all of the energy produced by the battery all the chemical energy is being turned to heat inside of the battery I should say cell and that means there's zero voltage between the terminals if you want the current it's very easy look at the internal resistance we know the voltage across it and its resistance the voltage was 1.5 volt resistance 0.1 divide gives 15 amps and for this example 15 amps is the maximum current the cell can ever deliver if you connect it to a circuit with components the current will be less than 15 amps 15 amps is maximum and it's sometimes referred to as the short circuit current two important points to note out of all that first of all V subscript R is the current times the internal resistance and it's referred to as the lost volts. The terminal PD, that's the voltage between the terminals of the cell, 
is the EMF minus the lost volts. Very useful. Okay. And let's look at a complete circuit for a moment. If we add a resistor to the circuit, capital R, that's the external resistance and sometimes it's called the load resistance and it could represent lots of components it's a combination resistance of maybe lots of bulbs and resistors it doesn't really matter it's a single resistor for this purpose because we're going to try and work out a general formula for the current in this circuit now before we do that can I point out this voltmeter is connected to the terminals of the cell but it doesn't have to be in that position to measure the, the terminal PD this position is also measuring the terminal PD because the wires connecting the things together have zero resistance. It could be long or short, doesn't really matter. I hope you can see here that the voltmeter is also measuring the voltage across the load resistance, big R. Because the voltmeter is connected to the terminals. The voltage across the load resistance is the same as the terminal PD. They are one and the same thing. The voltage across big R is the terminal PD. I could put the voltmeter here to make that clearer. Those three voltmeter positions are all completely equivalent in this circuit. Now, can we work out our formula? Yes. Let's apply Kirchhoff's second law to this circuit loop. The EMF is the sum of the voltages. Well, there's one EMF, and if we go around the loop, there are two voltages to add up. The voltage across the resistor, V, and the voltage across the internal resistance, V subscript R. So EMF is V plus V subscript R. We can replace the Vs by using V equals IR. For the V across the resistor, which is equal to the terminal PD, but it's also the voltage across the resistor, we can replace that with the current through the resistor times the value of resistance, I capital R. We can do the same for V subscript R, the lost volts. It's equal to I times little r. We can factorise out R, rearrange that, and we get that the current is EMF over R plus R. Now, big R and little r are resistors in series, so they represent the total resistance of the circuit, giving us this very important formula. The current through the cell is the EMF over the total circuit resistance. Very, very important. OK, that'll do for the moment. Don't want to overload you. In part three, we're going to look at some more calculations.